Tipkit is a framework that got introduced to us at DubDubDC 2023 and it is available from iOS 17 up. It finally got introduced in the newest Xcode beta versions. It wasn't available in the first few betas. Now it is available still with some issues, but today we will dive into how you can use Tipkit to present contextual tips that highlight new, interesting or unused features people haven't discovered on their own yet. I will be placing all of the tipkit code in this content view file, but I would suggest you to uh, break it up into its own different files wherever uh, those things make sense. So that is up to you to do that on your own. For the sake of presenting in this uh, video, I will be placing everything in this single content view file. And to get started, I will be importing tipkit. In Tipkit, as the name suggests, everything is based around tips and that's just a new protocol. So we will get started by creating a struct that conforms to the tip protocol. Now in our case, I want to tell the user that they can add app ideas on their own. So I will uh, say add app idea tip and that will conform to the tip protocol. In order to conform to that protocol, we will have to implement two variables. First one is the title Second one is the message. And as you can see, both of these aren't strings. They are actually Swift UI text. And I will create them in line here, but of course you can be creative with that. There are a bunch of additional attributes that you can implement and add to your tips to further customize them. And you can have a look at these attributes in the developer documentation, which is linked right below the subscribe button in this video's description. For example, you can add images to your tips and a bunch of other stuff, but that's not important for us right now. So we will be focusing on the title and the message. So the title will be add an app idea and the message will be tap the add button to create an app idea. So with this very simple uh, setup, we already have created our first tip, the add app idea tip. Now there are a few more things we need to go through. We need to tell the app how to set up TipKit and when to present these tips. Then we also need to decide where these tips should be presented in our apps. There are basically two approaches to presenting tips. There is the tip view, which is just a regular Swift UI view. And I can show that to you, for example, here, if the user doesn't have any app ideas created yet, I could show a tip view giving the add app idea tip. And just like that, this view will be displayed to the user. A cleaner approach, in my opinion, is to attach it as a popover to a certain part of your UI. Now, in this example, I will attach it to my content unavailable view. So to do that, you have to use the popover tip modifier. There are a few different options here that you can, uh, or a few different parameters that you can provide here. I recommend that you play around with them, especially the action but we will go with the simplest setup, just passing in our add app idea tip to the popover tip. Just like this, neither the tip view nor the popover tip will actually display in your app because there's one crucial step missing. And after I show you that step, I will also show you how to create custom event-based rules to show these tips. That's very interesting broken in the current version of Xcode 15, but I'm sure that will get fixed in the next beta version. So stick around for that. But now let's have a look at how you have to configure your app to actually show these tips. So in your actual app struct where you created your window group probably and have the content view in this case, I will first of all re-indent all of this because otherwise we will create a mess in a second. Here on your I would say, um, yeah, content view, your root view, you will have to attach the Swift UI task modifier. This allows you to call asynchronous code when this view first appears. And the code that we will call is from the tipkit framework. So we will have to import tipkit at the top of our file here. And then we want to try to await tips.configure. So this is a function that we can pass a trailing closure to. And in this closure, we can actually configure the tipkit framework. And there are basically two main ways to configure the framework. We can configure the display frequency. How often should any tip be displayed to the user? And if we just hit the dot here, you will notice that 
uh, either a tip will be displayed per day per hour per month per week or immediate this is the one that i will choose just for the example of this video so we have now configured the display frequency you can also configure the data store location and the uh, basic one would be application default as you can see there are a bunch of ways where the tip data or the tip kit data will be stored nothing that we will play around in this video and in most cases application default will be just fine for you so you need to make sure that you call tips.configure otherwise no tips will be shown to the user so let me now run this app on a brand new simulator that I've never started before. So this may take a second, but that ensures that we don't have any app ideas uh, yeah, created in this app on that simulator yet. So we will actually see this content unavailable view to which we attached the popover tip. It turns out that we can't attach the pop overview to the content unavailable view, so I'm sorry about that. Instead, I attached it to an even, a even better place, which is the add button in the toolbar down here. And as you can see now, immediately this popover tip got presented to the user with the title and the message. And of course, the user can close it and then it will be gone for good. They have seen the tip and it will not be shown again. And as you can see, I just closed the tip, started the app again. It's not showing again because the user did close it. They did see it, so it's not shown again. Now, this is the very simple and basic setup of how you can show tips as a tip view or as a popover tip in your apps. There is some more complex stuff that I encourage you to look into, which is the event-based rules on when to show your tip. So right now the tip will be shown immediately because we haven't specified a rule on when it should be shown. In order to set that up, we will have to create our own tip events. And that is also relatively simple. Now, once again, I will put this in the content view file, but this is something that you should put in its own dedicated file. So I will create an extension on my app ideas manager app, which is the struct of the entire app. I'm using an intention on this type, extension on this type, just because it's easy and convenient to access. You might put these variables that we're creating right now in a totally different place in your app. So I will create a static constant and I will call this add or added app idea event. And you will understand why I call it like that in a second once we actually start to use it. This is a tips.event with an ID string. And as the ID, I will honestly just copy over the variable name here and use that as the identifier as well. That should be good to go as a setup. So now what we can do is in our app, whenever a specific action happens, we want to donate this int or this event, not intent, it's a tips event. So what we can do is uh, so this one should, of course, be donated when the user added an app idea. So uh, that happens in this sheet right here. And there's a button to save an app idea. At the very bottom here, I can say add app ideas manager app dot added app idea event. This is the extension that we just created with our static variable up here. And then I can just say dot donate as easy as that. And with that, we have donated it and that event will be saved to the data store location that we specified. In this case, we're just using the default location for this application. We don't even care about where it is saved. So basically now TipKit knows how often this event got donated. So essentially TipKit now knows how many app ideas the user has created. We can now use this to create rules for our tips on when they are displayed. Now, just be cautious, in this version of Xcode, which is beta 5, it is not uh, possible to create these rules, but I will show you the syntax either way. It just won't compile right now. It will compile in the next version. I'm pretty sure about that. It is a known issue. So to create these rules, you create another property on your uh, add app idea tip or however you call your tip struct. And that will be a var rules, which as the autocomplete already suggested is an array of rule. I will make this a computed property. And then here we can use the 
hashtag rule macro. Now this is exactly where it is currently broken because this macro is apparently not set to being public in the current version of tipkit so we can't use it but this is how you will use it once that is fixed. So we want to create a rule for an event so we will say we want a rule for the app ideas manager app dot added app idea event. That's the event that we care about in this rule. And then in here we get an event as a parameter and let me refactor that to use the trailing closure as always because I'm a big fan of that Swift feature. And in here this is basically uh, just a bool expression that we need to return. So here we can say event dot donations dot is empty. We only want to show this tip if no added app idea event donation has ever happened. So only if the user has never created an app idea themselves, only if this event has never been donated to Tipkit, only then we want to show the add app idea tip. You can stack these and concatenate these. So you could create a second rule here to say, and only if X, Y, Z happens. So you can stack these rules here, very simple setup. But as I mentioned, uh, this macro is currently broken in the version of Xcode that I'm recording with. It will be fixed in the future. That's pretty much for certain. If you're interested about what this App Ideas Manager app is, then I recommend you to watch my Swift Data course, which is a almost one hour long free course going in detail on the new Swift Data framework and how you can use it to build your own apps for iOS 17.